I'd like to present our next presenter to you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, he has dual, he has dual role. Again, he's an entrepreneur. We have one of our presenters here, the entrepreneur today, which is a good thing. Yes. The entrepreneurial spirit is in the house. Yes. He's the chief marketing officer of Immerse Bahamas Limited. And coming to give us our next presentation will be Mr. Creighton Moxie. That's welcome, please. So, the first thing I want to do is, we're talking about social media, right? And I'm not just going to assume everyone here knows what social media is. Right. So I'll give you all the textbook definition. The textbook definition of social media, if you were to look it up, would be the utilization of websites and applications to basically share ideas and network with people. But when you say it like that, it makes it sound kind of funny. And I want to give you a clearer defini definition because social media is actually a tool for garnering and gathering awareness. So. What I view social media as is a distribution channel. And when I say distribution channel, it's basically a way to spread the offering you up and spread the message you up. And distribution channels have nothing new in this world. So for example, right, if you look back in the day and someone had to send a message somewhere, they would have a bird with like the message strapped to the bird's leg, right? And they would strap it there and they would send it off and, that, and they would send the message. That was a distribution channel. They were sending what they had to send. Whether it's a product service or a message, that's your offering. And they were sending that, right? And what I realized in the world today is that there's nothing really new. It's just an innovation on the old things. So back then, you had a bird dropping a message to his leg and sending it above. But today, what we have is Twitter. And that's a form of social media. If you look at Twitter, right, the icon for, for Twitter is a bird. And I, I really feel it's based upon the whole philosophy of sending messages, tweeting, sending messages. And you, it's basically used, utilizing technology as a platform now to do the same thing. Back in the day, a lot of people, I mean, some people probably still watch television. I don't have cable, so. Well, maybe for internet, but I don't watch cable as far as watching TV shows and stuff on it, right? But today, we also have, back in the day, a lot of people focused on television, because that was a new distribution channel. Mm -hmm. When the ads first came out, people were paying a lot of money. I mean, they still paying a lot of money for some, but it's diminishing some. But now, today, you got YouTube. That's my version of television and a lot of other people's version of television. You can go on there and you can control what you want to watch. And that's what I noticed. Uh, with a lot of generations and a lot of the youth, we want to be able to control what we watch. We don't want to just go and be forced to watch this channel, that channel, as it gets boring. Uh, even in terms of radio, that was one of the distribution channels, and when that first came out, everyone was jumping on it. It was like new real estate. People were paying a lot of money to advertise their product on radio. Now we have various channels such as podcasts that you could do online and distribute your content over and over digitally. So I feel that's very, very powerful. But I can talk about distribution channels all day, but what I want to really talk about is the effective use of social media. And I feel there are two things you have to do to utilize social media effectively. And those two things are focused on reach and influence. What reach is, is it's common sense, kind of. Getting the message out there to as much people as possible. That's your reach. But along with reach, you want to have influence. And influence is actually getting that message to them and making sure something happens after you get it to them. So I'll talk a little bit about how you achieve reach right now with social media and pretty much anything you're doing. And the way you actually do that is to form content that's contagious. And I actually read a book called Contagious from this guy called Jonah Berger. He's a marketing expert. And in his book, he laid out the, uh, this philosophy, well, this acronym. And the acronym is STEPS with two P's, S-T-E-P-P-S, mm -hmm. STEPS. And what the acronym actually stands for is various elements that will make your content contagious and make sure it reaches the right people. So the first S in steps is social currency. And what social currency is, is literally when something has value that will make other people want to hear about it and learn about it. So an example he gave in this book about social currency was, right? Any of y'all know what a uh, Philly cheese stick is? Mm -hmm. yeah. Y'all like them? Have y'all ever made that? All right, so the traditional price of a Philly cheese steak is probably about, I'd say somewhere around $10, $11, whatever. You ain't gonna spend too much more than that, right? But there was this place in Philadelphia that sold Philly cheese steaks. 
And the thing about their Philly cheesesteak was it cost $100. Wow. And with that $100, a lot of people might be like, oh, the Philly cheesesteak costs $100? I ain't going there. But a lot of people actually went there because it cost $100. They wanted to experience the $100 Philly cheesesteak mm -hmm. and be able to go back to their friends and brag and say, I had the $100 Philly cheesesteak. That's pretty much like someone buying, we may not think about it this way, but someone buying a, pretty, a really nice car. They might be buying that car and and some, some, sometimes it comes with good features, but a lot of times they're buying it to impress other people. That's what you're currency. You're doing it because you want other people to be like, oh, he's riding a really nice car. And that's your social currency right there. So anytime you're developing content, you want to have an element of social currency to it, mm -hmm. to where if someone wants to pick up on the content you're doing on your social, on your social media and share it, they feel important because they're sharing it. That's like, I ain't gonna use the next example. No. That's enough. But that's like, <laughs> exactly. That's like if, a, if some new information come up, right? Like a list of, uh, say, say people get fired, sorry. But say people get fired, right? And a list of names come out. The person who gets that list, they try to share it as much as, as, much yeah. as possible. Or if something happening, an event, it might even be catastrophic. Mm -hmm. Someone trying to record that video right there and share that as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Because they know they can get some social currency from being the first person to share it and they feel like, you know, they did something important. So the first yes, is social currency. Any content you develop, you have to have that element within it. The next part of the word steps is T, and that's triggers. So, what triggers are is basically anything that will make people think about you. So, in terms of your branch, you want to make people think about, about the PLB or, or develop things that will form triggers and allow them to come again and say, oh, we want to we wanna get involved in that, in that. So, for the PLB, a one of your triggers is the yellow and blue. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think it's brown, but when people see those colors together in the Bahamas, they think of PLB, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the scenarios he gave in this book, I don't even think he gave in this book, I think I probably just looked that up somewhere else. But one of the scenarios that I found out about was with Mars. Anyone ever ate like the Mars candy bars? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good because I haven't ate them. But, <laughs> but you guys have ate them, right? And it was it was an event in 1997. Mars were pretty much spent the same amount of dollars to market and spent the same amount of money on their sales team to distribute the message about Mars and Ghana and Ghana awareness. But for some reason in 1997, their sales spiked. Any of you have an idea of why their sales were spiked? No idea. <laughs> no idea. Okay, so I'll share, I'll share with you right now. In 1997, NASA actually was launching a lot of adventures to Mars. And as people were going online and different channels and stuff like that, trying to search up about the venture to Mars, they were finding out about the Mars bars. And the Mars bar sales were rising. So it was like an indirect kind of approach. So they might have set up their name like that initially, but they got a lot of indirect marketing. That's just uh, like, the next way you can do that is setting up proper slogans within your branch to make sure that when you when you present this slogan, it might connect with a lot of people for different reasons, but then they end up coming to your branch because of that. Or thinking of you at least, you want to garner awareness. In today's world, a lot of times we think of money as just money, but the new currency is also awareness. I don't know how much it, how much you are actually on social media, right? But if you were to go on an Instagram page and someone has 100,000 followers, that's money. Because they could take that attention from about 100,000 followers, and even if only 10% of them are loyal, they can convert that into, into money. So for example, right, if I were to set up my social media page, and uh, let me see, I'm in, the, I'm in the market industry. I'm providing a lot of free information about marketing, right? People might come there, and they might start following me because they know they're about to get something every day because of consistency. And that's the next thing you want to have in your branch. You want to have consistency where you're offering something to people every day. Mm -hmm. They know that if they follow your page, they're getting something all the time. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I follow someone. If I want to follow someone and they post it once a year, I don't follow them, but what's the point? Right. I want to be able to get that practical value consistently. And that's the whole point of setting up your of setting up yourself in a way where your 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 marketing channels are consistent. So, for example, with, with my social media, right, I know that I'm garnering a lot of attention. Now I have a product that I'm offering. Mm -hmm. I might give out a lot of stuff for free initially. And and the thing about marketing is you gotta think long term. I might give out a lot of information free initially. I might tell you how to do this, that, to buy snippets. But when you read that information, you find out what I do. Personally, I provide a lot of information on LinkedIn, right? Free articles, give them up, take my time, and try to help other people. Because you really gotta be trying to help people. You can't just do it thinking money, money, money. But over time, people find out about you, and they find out about what you do, and they connect with you emotionally, and then they wanna come to you. And that's the E in steps. The E in steps is emotion. If you're trying to sell anything in this world or get people engaged in anything in this world, you gotta tap into emotions. For example, right, Apple. 
you know about Apple and you know, which is inside. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Apple, right? When Apple is trying to sell you a computer, they don't come to you and say, oh, this is how much gigabytes this computer has. No, they sell you on emotion. So when they do their campaigns, you will see them off campaigns such as the Think Different campaign, yes. where they did an ad and it was one of their most famous ads. They had a bunch of people basically who were innovative thinkers. They thought different. They had like Albert Einstein, Martin Luther King, all these various people, right? And not once did they show a computer in a whole lot. Only at the end you saw the, the, the logo of Apple oh, Bob right. and then the word Think Different. And what they did with that, with that is they tapped into people's emotion. People were already interested when they, when, when they uh, in the commercial, so then they became interested in the product as a result. So you want to hit people with emotion, tap into them emotionally first, and then you come with the logic. And a great way to tap into people emotionally, which I might well not talk about it right now, is video content. I see, uh, as far as with the branches, right, we're able to capture a lot of, uh, of photography, which is perfect. But look at this, right? If I'm about to take my time to go to somewhere and take a picture, why wouldn't I get video too? And that's, a, that's an important thing you've got to think about in your marketing strategies. You've got to document. Document and then worry about creating later. If you get it on film, I can always be like, oh, I don't want to put this out. Or I can always be like, edit this in this way or that way so that I don't, you know, make certain people mad or whatever the goal is for your target market. So you got to document and then create. So for example, right? I'm, this this is the uh, lovely young lady right there is documenting me right now. <laughs> She's documenting me right now, right? If I choose I don't want to put this out, that's on me. Or if someone says, don't put out this video of me, then you can make a decision. But if you document it, you love it. And that's powerful. Mm -hmm. The next P in the whole steps process is public visibility. And public visibility is basically making sure that what you do, other people will want to gravitate towards it when it's seen, and, and it's visually stimulating, and they want to gravitate towards it. So for example, right, one of the, one of the ways people use public visibility in market is, anyone who's with Christian Louboutin, any, they call it the red bottom. It's like the shoes yeah. in the red bottom, right? And they were one of the first people to do that. The color is like trade markets, China red. They were one of the first people to do that, right? And now all kind of other people are trying to imitate them and do their own red bottoms. Right. But look at this, when people try to imitate you, they can eventually find out about the original because you're the best at doing it. Right. So they're trying to imitate them right now, but people will be like, who are the real creators of Red Bottom? Mm -hmm. They go find out about Christian Mouton. That's marketing right there. Mm -hmm. The next P is practical value. Anything you offer, you got to have real value. And when I say practical value, it really can vary based on who your target market is. So, for example, right? I know this guy. He started a wine channel. He was one of the first people on, Insta on, on YouTube back in the day, right? And he, start, he owned a wine company, but he decided to start a wine channel. And people were looking at him like, why are you taking so much time out of your schedule to talk about wine? So what he did right, is, right, he recorded videos for free on YouTube, distributed them. He talked about wine, but at the same time, he gave people insight on how this wine tasted. It was a tasting channel. And he was able to build up a following off of doing that, but guess what he did? He owned his own wine shop, mm -hmm. right? So, he was getting that attention right there, but he was putting links to the same wines he demonstrated on his channel, on his page. So now people went right there, they, they, they watched the video, and then they clicked the link, and they were able to purchase on his site. Now this dude is making a lot of money. He's actually in the social media space now, but he's making a lot of money. So, as you see, the practical value is very important. So look at this, right? In your own branches, if you were to get, say you're trying to attract the youth, right? Why would you not get content? Showing the youth, showing the things you do with the youth, target that towards them, which you can do on the various channels. And you're sending a message that's built for someone to that person. Why would they not like it? That's efficiency right there. So that's one way for you guys to be efficient in your branches. So I'm at, that's two P's already gone. The last letter is S, and that letter is stories. And in anything you want to do, a great way to spread messages is actually stories. So one of the things I read in this book is about this army, they were trying to attack the city, right? And the city was way stronger than them, naturally. Like, they just had a bigger force, they had better weaponry, weaponry, right? But instead of just trying to attack them head on, this is what they did. They developed a Trojan horse. They hid their army inside the horse. And the other city, they were just fascinated with the horse. They thought it was a statue. They brought it inside their city, right? They just left it there. People were admiring it. But then they went to sleep at night. And when they went to sleep at night, that army broke out of the horse, went into their city, and just destroyed it. And they won based on that strategy. So, when I, I say that to say that, stories are the same way. If I just come to someone saying, oh, I want to sell you this or sell you that, they might reject me and be like, I ain't feeling that. 
like he's trying to sell me. They feel like he's trying to sell them. But if I come to you with a story, you get so interested in the story, when the product comes up eventually, you I already got you emotionally. Mm -hmm. So now you want to find out about what I have to offer. You're interested because you know I'm providing value to you. I'm not just trying to take value from you, which would be the money. So those are pretty much great ways you can expand your reach. But the next way, uh, the next thing is influence. And to expand your influence, you want to make sure that your offering has value and that you target that, like we're talking about, to the right people. So, for example, right, if I, I know I have the youth crowd, right, and I know they're interested in, oh, I'll just use another product. Since we're in the Bahamas and tourism is like a big thing. Okay, right, I know I have a tourism company. I'm going out getting very good tourism content. I might walk around at Snowmont and I might film certain people in the community who don't get the public recognition, re recognition but they have something valuable to offer. And they might not be on social media. I would film them, film them, right? And I would call it hidden gems. I would go around, film them, distribute this content to various people, right? I'm basically helping to market them. And when I'm helping to market them, I'm targeting that content on the various channels. So I'll just talk a little bit about targeting. What we don't realize about social media sites is they gather a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Facebook is an information company. They're not just what you, what you think they are. They don't just make money off ads. They've actually been getting a lot of problems lately because they've been trying to make a lot of money off of your information. And we just give them our information freely because we want to be on the social sites to network. So look at this, right? They have all this information, but you know what it allows them to do? It allows them to target people based on certain demographics. So for example, if I'm targeting, if, if, if I'm in the tourism industry, right, I can put out that same video, I can go on Instagram, I can promote it. That means I have to pay Instagram to promote their product, right? I promote it. I can literally target that to males and females, or just split it up. I can target that to whatever age group or age range I want. I can target that based on your interests. So if you like ecotourism, if you like pig tours, I can just write that in there and only can target to people who are interested in those things. Right. And, this, and Instagram is able to tell who's interested in what things because they have all the information. Mm -hmm. They see what you're searching and all that. And it's the same thing with Facebook. Facebook goes to Instagram. But it's the same thing with Facebook. They're able to see all this information and they can target stuff towards you. So look at this, right? Why in your branches can't you do the same thing? It's high efficiency and it's low cost. Right. So look at this, right? Instead of paying for an ad for my branch or, or whatever, if, if it was a company, or paying for an ad to push up this message for your branch, right? Instead of paying thousands of dollars to put it in the newspaper, why would I not just create my own content with a camera, create my own video, and distribute that on like Instagram for say, $2 over the course of three days, right? Mm -hmm. And that's cheap for a lot of y'all in the zone to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. $2 for three days, right? You get, that's, six, that's a $6 budget. You're guaranteed to reach at least 1,000, 2,000 people based on how you target. Now I can reach those people and I can keep redistributing it. The newspaper, I put that in there once, that's gone. If people don't see that right then, it's over. So why would I not take it? Exactly. So why would I not take advantage of the new real estate, which people aren't hopping on right now, it should be costing me way more to actually implement this, why would I not take advantage of it right now? Mm -hmm. So that's one way we're getting you guys messages out that you can talk into right now. And I'll just talk a little bit about the, about the various channels. So pretty much everyone is on Facebook. Right? They got billions of people, right? Mm -hmm. So if I was trying to target people in an older demographic, I would likely go to Facebook because they're more likely to be there than anywhere else. If I were looking for people who are more, you know, I would say like millennials or like the ages of 18 and probably between say like 27, I would go to Twitter because I know that they are more likely to be on Twitter. So, one thing I've realized is that traffic is out there. Traffic is out there. It's already built. You don't have to make nothing new. Mm -hmm. It already exists. You just have to be strategic and how you go towards it. So if I know that these people are already congregating in these areas, which would be your research to find out, find where people are congregating, find out where they're doing certain things, find out the activities they like, why would you send a message to those same areas? You could geolocate it to specific places too. I didn't even mention that part. So for example, right, if I'm trying to win the vote for people in Little Exoma, why would I not just target the message to strictly Little Exoma? And then you, you don't just use one piece of content. You create unique content for every circumstance. So for this video, right, what I would do is I would address that to the people of Little Exoma. If I'm only focusing on people uh, in a certain age group, I would say the age group, I would say, I would describe that person. It's pretty much called, uh, and I do it in, in my own business, it's called like customer profile. If I'm trying to search for people to get business with, I'm developing a customer profile, so I'm strategic and I'm not wasting my time. Mm -hmm. If I know I'm searching for people in Little Exoma, create the customer profile of that person in Little Exoma. Give them a name and all. Name that person. So you might be looking for uh, 
Michael or something. Like look for Michael, find <laughs> Michael, create a custom profile for Michael, and send that message for Michael right to Michael. Mm -hmm. And he'll be receptive of it because it's for Michael. He'll feel like, oh, wow, they designed this just for me. It's unique. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way to target your messages. Mm -hmm. And by targeting your messages, you have influence. You have influence. If I go to a country, right, and I carry in a bag of fish right now, and everyone hungry, and they like seafood, are they not likely to buy the fish from me? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have influence over them. I can make them buy my fish. Mm -hmm. So one thing I've learned in life is that if you target no one, or if you make a product for everyone, you're making a product for no one. Mm -hmm. So if I go they're trying to sell you that this message is for everyone, the message is really for no one. So you, you define who your message is for and you go after those people. That's target. That's the number one thing in marketing. To do the, to do the opposite of that, do the opposite of marketing. So, uh, and then the next thing, pretty much the last thing I have to say about the topic of effective social media use, is that know your strengths. And you brought this up, Ms. Mm -hmm. Carter. Know your strengths. It's so important. In life, you've got to know your strengths. So, in your branch, you may have some, some people who are good at the accounting, they should be the treasurer. You might have certain people who are good at the marketing, they should be a PR and all those different stuff. Know your strengths and tap your strengths. That's the number one rule of advancing in life. So, with my company, right, I know I'm good at marketing. I'm not going to try to do all of the finances. I'm not going to try to do these things. That's not my area of expertise. Or say, in my company, I develop business plans. I'm not going to try to do the graphics to make the business plan look so good. I pay someone to do that. <laughs> I would feel like I'm losing some money right there, but I'm actually gaining money because instead of me taking my time to try to do that, I don't poor level, mm -hmm. I pay someone else to do it at a high quality level, I retain my customers, I get more customers because those customers talk about me, and I save my time and I can take on other projects. Okay. So, for you guys to save the time of hurting your head over so much stuff, everyone find out their strengths, everyone do their strengths, and tap into it. And that's, that's an easy way to advance. So, from a social media perspective, if I'm good at writing, I need to be the person on that branch page, on LinkedIn, writing various blog articles and putting out that content. Mm -hmm. If I'm good at, I'm a, I'm a, like I'm a socialite, I'm good at talking to people, I need to be the person with the camera out interviewing people in the community to get their perspective on the things that are going on and, and distributing that content. It's, it's about knowing your strengths. Life is a game of knowing your strengths. And one book that taught me that was mastery. It's basically talking about how do people be really know about doing, know for doing things. They focused on what they, the one thing they were good at and mastered that. If you focus on, and, and in society people try to say, this is your weakness, this is your weakness, and they try to tell you get good at all your weaknesses. I don't believe in that. I say get good at what your strengths are, focus on your strengths, and go fully in that direction. But for your weaknesses, find people in your community, collaborate with them, and you've got a perfect team to, make, to take advantage of what your weaknesses are, and you can go forward in the future. So I feel like you should do the same thing within your branches. Find out who has strengths in which areas, don't worry about your weaknesses so much because someone can have a strength in that area of weaknesses, weakness and you just be 100% you. If I had tried to focus on, say, being a graphic designer, and a marketer, and a comment, and a this and that, I would have never gotten anything done in life. It really slows down the process of you doing stuff. And the number one asset we have in life is time. We all have a certain time limit on us. So you got to take advantage of what you got to maximize the amount of time you have in life. That's pretty much all I have to say. Uh -huh. <laughs> Anyone else any questions? How can uh, how can can members help to to also push out the messages from social media that are brand new? I love that you said that. Members should be involved, right? I would assume if you're a member of something, you should have some level of involvement, right? Mm -hmm. That means when things are going on that involve the branch, they should be there. They should be in attendance. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in attendance, why would I not capture certain content? Even if I don't put it out on my own page, I could send it to the people who are in the branch and let them distribute it. Yeah. Yeah. So do your part as a member. If you're involved in something, I'll never join anything and give it a half effort. Like if, you, if you're involved in something, be fully involved. You in the communities, you're at these events. Capture something, even if it's a picture, set it. Everyone has their own capacity in life, right? So, for example, if you have a photographer for a branch, they might not be able to be at every location all the time. So as the members, why don't you take on the role of being a photographer? Look at these phones, right? You know how, you know how good these cameras are, right? 
I spoke to a photographer recently, and they told me that they were focusing more on videography because it required more skill to actually capture the right angles and stuff like that. They said, in some cases, someone might take a picture with their phone, and they, as a photographer, professional photographer, they have to be looking at that picture to see if it was taken on like a Nikon or a DSLR camera, or if it was actually taken on their phone. It's hard to tell the difference now. So you all have smartphones, why can't you go out, if you're at the event, take a picture and send it in, and help, help your team? Everyone just do their part. Mm -hmm. And even if you, do, if you do your part, focus on that, you do that to the best of your ability, and you see other areas that you have the capacity to help with, help with it. It only helps everyone advance. Mm -hmm. If I know I can do something, why would I, why would I not do it? Especially if it benefits the people I care about. Yeah. Do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs>